personally, when I was a child, I was always interested in dinosaurs and dragons. So when I had a chance to work with sun gazers, that alone was very exciting. Um, sun gazers occur just in the high felt grasslands. So you've got a certain amount of rainfall every year. You've got your temperate climate. So if you remove them from that area, they no longer have the prey. They no longer have the right soil type. They can't dig the burrows. Uh, they don't get enough moisture. They don't get the, the exposure to cold. They need a, a cooling period before they breed like a lot of reptiles do. So you take them out of that environment and they don't have any of their requirements that they need to breed. So the sun gazer is a species that hasn't really been bred in captivity. There's only one known case. And um, they're very high in demand in the international pet trade. So unfortunately, what this means is that every time you see an animal turning up in the um, pet market, I see pictures on Facebook or Instagram of people with their pet sun gazers. Each of those individual animals have come from the Free State or Mpumalanga in South Africa. They've been taken from the wild and are now sitting in, um, in a tank in someone's house. My research is looking at the genetic structure of the sun gazer population. So effectively, I'm collecting sun gazer tissue samples from across the whole distribution of the species. And I'm looking at how human um, fragmentation of the landscape has now affected their genetic health. And so very importantly, if somebody wants to export sun gazers for the pet trade, we can now ensure that those animals are actually captive bred rather than being poached directly from the wild. So you have to then prove, uh, prove that before you can get a permit. I've had first-hand experience with dealing with animals that have been smuggled out of other countries. It's, it, it's an important part of what I do and why I do it. And sun gazers specifically, because if we don't look after these lizards, they're going to disappear. And that is the case for a lot of animals in the country and a lot of animals in the world. But if this animal disappears off the planet, it would be a huge loss. Through collecting tissue samples from across the whole distribution of the species, we would be able to answer questions regarding the effects of habitat fragmentation on genetic structure, levels of inbreeding, investigate how, how the animals actually move between colonies, so how gene flow works. This is an example of some extracted DNA from the sun gazer scale, so you get fairly small amount of DNA. Here's an example of some microsat results from some of my sun gazers. If we look at these two individuals, we see that this animal has these two alleles, which it's inherited from its parents, and this individual has these two alleles that it's inherited from its parents. So these two individuals are most likely not very closely related. These two share the same allele here, but have a different allele here. That means that they are more closely related than the previous two animals that we looked at. Um, but they still have this allele difference. So by looking at all of the other markers as well, we'll be able to put together a picture of how closely related each individual is to each other. If we get animals that have been poached, we can look at the DNA and actually figure out roughly where about they come from, and eventually just try and understand how we are affecting the species on a genetic level and how we can come up with solutions to try and stop from uh, getting even worse.